jukebox. I'm glad CCP finally fixed the jukebox. Hello, I'm Seamus Dunahu of EVE University, and this is an introduction to the directional scanner. Now, your main tool for being aware of your surroundings is your overview window, and it is useful for exactly what I just said, being aware of your surroundings. So for example, I see two ships, I see a pod, I see a station, I see... Now I switched my tactical, I can see the sentry guns, right? but I can also see all the other stations in the solar system. There is another tool for being aware of your surroundings, and that's the directional scanner. Go to the capacitor donut, which by default appears at the bottom of the screen, though I believe you can also align it to appear at the top instead, if you want to. So to the left of the capacitor donut, you have the scanner button, and then you go to the directional scan tab. And what you're going to see is three inputs, a checkbox, a range, and an angle. By the default, I believe the range is 1,000 kilometers the first time you open the directional scanner window. And you know what? For our purposes, let me reduce this to 500. So I am currently in orbit around G4 Moon 4 Caldari Business Tribunal Bureau offices. And if I run the directional scanner, Let's say I put in a range of 500 kilometers and an angle of 360, and I turn off the checkbox. I get four results, right? Uh, an orca named Mining Bonuses, the station itself, an Ibis named Grant Manson Zibis, and a Caldari shuttle named Diplomatic Shuttle. And if I look up at my overview, those objects are present. So here's the Orca, here's the Caldari shuttle, there's the Ibis, one of those things just warped off, and there's the station. What do these inputs mean? Well, I've asked the directional scanner to give me a list of all objects within 500 kilometers of my ship and in any direction. That is, the angle is 360. So that's omnidirectional. And it returns the list of results. Keeping in mind, it only displays that list at the moment you click the Scan button. All right. So if I just leave that window, if I just leave this window alone for the next 10 minutes, it's just going to show me that same list for the next 10 minutes, even if people are coming and going from the station. All right. So the results are only current at the time that you click the Scan button. If you want a new set of results five seconds later, you've got to click the button five seconds later. I can tell it different ranges. I can tell it a range of 1,000 kilometers, and I get a list of results. I can tell it a range of 1 million kilometers, hit return, I get a list of results. Uh, I can put in any number of ranges. Now, the results that you get back have three columns, the name, the type, and the distance. Now, the distance field will be blank unless you can already see the object on your on your overview. All right, so, for example, uh, all these moons, I can see the distances from me to the moon on directional because if I go to my everything overview tab, there are the moons. G to 4, moon 1, distance of 361,000 kilometers. And here on the list of results, G to 4, moon 1, 361,000 kilometers. Or in the case of ships that happen to be nearby. Here, let me sort this by distance. Player ships that are nearby, there's an Ibis 256 kilometers from me according to directional, but I can see that same Ibis on overview. So the distance is only shown if the object is already visible on your overview. If it's not visible on your overview, the distance is left blank. You're only told that the object exists. How is this useful? Well, if you want to see what objects are close to you, you can set a closer range. This is everything within 1 million kilometers. Again, if I go back down to 500 kilometers, well, actually, that's more like the size of the grid. If I go up to 800 kilometers, uh, 
then I can see a list of all objects within 800 kilometers of me. For example, there's a Scorpion Navy issue and a Fenrir class Minmitar freighter somewhere within 800 kilometers of me. All right. The range can go up as high as 2.1 billion kilometers. And for those of you who are programmers, you will recognize this number as 2 to the 31st power minus 1. So 2.1 billion kilometers. This comes out to about 14.35 astronomical units. Some celestial objects are more than 14.35 astronomical units away. So, for example, if I look at Stargate Morasi, I can see that on the overview. It's a celestial object. I can see it from anywhere in the solar system because it's a stargate. But that stargate is 39.8 astronomical units away, so I can't see it on directional. Directional scanner won't reach out that far. Uh, Jita 5 Moon 17 Kaldari Construction's production plant, however, is within directional scanner range. And let me scroll down through here. Jita 5... Where is that? Hold on, let me sort this by name. Cheetah 5, Moon 17, Kaldari Constructions Production Plant. All right. So that's within directional scanner range. Now, the thing to know about directional scanner is it detects the presence of any sorts of objects, most particularly combat scanner probes and player ships. That's what most people use the directional scanner to try to find. How do you do that? Well, I've already mentioned the range. The other thing is the angle. Right now the angle is set to 360. That means it's omnidirectional. It's giving me a list of all results within a sphere, 14.35 uh, astronomical units in radius, centered on my ship. But suppose I only want to look in a particular direction. I can change the angle. I set the angle to 15 degrees, now all of a sudden I'm not getting any results. What does this angle mean? Well, when the angle is not 360, directional scanner focuses its scan on a particular cone. Your ship is at the center, is at the tip of that cone. And which way the cone points depends upon which way your camera is facing. So, for example, if I turn my camera to face the station over there, and I click the scan button, I can see the IBIS and the station on the list of results. That's because that the station and the IBIS are within uh, the cone, at least as I'm pointing the camera. If I move the camera over here, then those two objects disappear from the directionals. Well, if I move the camera and then click the scan button, those two objects disappear from the directional scanner because they're not within 15 degrees in front of the camera. So let me aim the camera over at G to 4 in the distance. And I will click the scan button. So now I see a whole bunch of results. Uh, there's G to 4 moon nine. Where is that? Oh, Jita 4 Moon 9 happens to be right in between us and Jita 5. Interesting. But anyway, I can see that besides the celestial objects off in that direction, there's also a small standard container. There's three other small standard containers and somebody's shuttle. So I can see that on directional. If I aim the camera, let's see, if I aim the camera at Jita 3, and the way I'm aiming this, your ship is always in the center of view, unless you're using the advanced camera options, but usually your own ship is in the center of view, so you move the sh camera so that your ship is in between the camera and what you want to scan. So there's Jita 3, center of the screen. I scan, and what I see over there, besides the planet and the moon, I also three, see three small standard containers. 
So I can scan particular objects in a particular... I can scan in a particular direction if I don't want the complete list of junk that's all around me. Click the scan button again, and look, I am looking at Cheetah 4 Moon 6 and somebody's frozen corpse. Apparently, somebody was pod killed over there, and the corpse is still, f of that capsuleer is still floating in space. That capsuleer has since reincarnated in a different body and is flying around somewhere. But anyway, uh, if I aim the camera over at Kaldari Navy Assembly Plant, and I click the scan button, I now have an entire list of junk. All right. So that suggests that all of these objects that I'm seeing on directional scanner are near that station. That doesn't necessarily have to be the case. The station is only 1,078 kilometers away, and my maximum range on the directional scanner is 2.1 billion kilometers. Some of these objects could possibly be in between us and the station, just not close enough to see on the overview. Or they could be very far away from the station, astronomical units away from the station, astronomical units behind that station. It just happens to be in the same, on the same straight line as me and the station. But if you point your directional scanner at a celestial object, and you run the scan, and you see a list of results, chances are most of those results are going to be at that celestial object. Let's go actually warp over there. Warp drive active. So I am warping to Jita 4, Moon 4, Kaldari Navy assembly plant to within 100 kilometers. And bingo, there are all the results that we saw on directional scanner. Alright. So if I reduce the... Hold on, let me get myself moving again. I'm going to orbit this station at 200 kilometers, I'm going to run my afterburner. So let me drop my range down to... let's say 500 kilometers, and on the directional. And here are all the results that we were looking at before. And now that they're actually on grid with us, we can see them on overview, now we have their distances on the directional scanner. Alright. So you can set your directional scanner to a small range if you're only interested in things that are near you. Uh, and by near, it might you might be talking about something like a million kilometers, rather than 2.1 billion. Or maybe you're just interested in things that are within an astronomical unit of you. And if you want to go looking for things, you can change the angle and scan in particular directions. When you change the angle, it will automatically do a scan. But if you want to change the range, you have to type in a new number, and then either click the scan button, or press return. So that is an introduction to the directional scanner. In future episodes, I will go over uh, the defensive and offensive uses of the directional scanner. In the meantime, thank you for watching.